In this video, I'm going to be unboxing my new Central Machinery 4x6 horizontal vertical metal cutting bandsaw that I purchased from a local Harbor Freight. And I'm going to do a bit of inspecting as well. As with any new tool, there may be defects, and I'd like to find them as soon as possible, preferably before assembly. Upon opening, I'm greeted by a neatly packaged item. The smaller parts are conveniently located on top while the larger saw body is encased in styrofoam. I briefly inspect everything as I remove it from the box. So far everything seems fine. Well I think I've unpacked all the small pieces. As I look it over I don't see any obvious problems. The fasteners are organized into four different bags, which should be helpful during assembly. I've checked to see that all the parts were included. Now it's time to inspect the motor and gearbox. The gears turn smoothly. but the saw needs adjustment. Motor feels fine also, and I detect no slop in the bearings as I give the pulleys a shake. I don't see any oil leaks under or around the gearbox, but it looks like a bolt hole is leaking a little bit. I'm going to plug it in and turn it on for a couple seconds to test the motor. After unplugging the bandsaw, I continue with my inspection. To prevent oil from leaking out of the gearbox when I remove the cover plate, I prop up this side of the box with a couple of 2 by 4s The bolts that secured the cover plate were removed using a 10 millimeter socket. Using this little angled pick, I examine the worm shaft. I'm feeling for rough spots, burrs, lips, steps, anything that might prematurely wear out the worm gear. I didn't find any problems using the pick, so I guess I'll try using my finger. The edges aren't too sharp. It feels fine. The brass worm gear looks fine, as does the oil. There's some kind of grease on the gears, which I assume is assembly lube. There's no debris or metal shavings. It looks fairly clean, so I'm going to put the cover back on. I made sure the gasket was oriented properly. I installed all six bolts, finger tight. Next I used the wrench to tighten the bolts in two stages. I'm careful not to over torque them. After removing these boards used to prop up the saw, it's time to unpack the rest. Opening the end of the box made it easy for me. I slid the bandsaw out of the box while it was still in its styrofoam cradle. With a utility knife, I liberated the saw from the styrofoam. And now it's completely unpacked. Removing this pin allows me to pivot the saw arm to the raised position. 
the arm locks in three different positions, so now's a good time to check that. I locked the arm in the vertical position and installed the locking pin. I took out the screw that locks the blade access door with a Phillips head screwdriver. I loosen this knob and slide the movable panel up out of the way so the door will clear the blade arm hinge. At first glance, everything looks right. But remember that blade adjustment I mentioned earlier? One set of blade guide bearings was tightly pinching the blade and causing it to jump. After a quick adjustment, the problem was solved, and I'll show that adjustment in a later video. To install the feed table for the vertical bandsaw setup, I first need to remove this blade guard using a Phillips screwdriver. Those are the guide bearings I was talking about. With the table in place, I install the screws and lightly tighten them down. After checking the table for square in reference to the blade, I removed the table and closed the blade access door. Then I installed the screw that locks the blade access door closed, then closed and locked the movable panel. Both of the adjustable blade supports move easily. The blade feed adjustment screw turns fine. The miter block and movable jaw of the stock clamp worked well also. Well, I think that's it. It passed my pre-assembly inspection. So in the next video, I'm going to put it together. Thanks for watching.